It's been eight years, Madam Speaker, eight years of this Prime Minister, thousands of new victims of crime across Canada in those eight years. And I stand here not only as the voice of my constituents in Thornhill, but also as the voice of thousands of people in every corner of this country who want us to start taking safety of our community seriously. I grew up in the place that I represent here in the, uh, in the House of Commons today, and I've spent almost my entire life living in the Toronto area. And even though the city is home to millions, we've always been blessed about having a, a feeling of big city safety. And that's not often found elsewhere. For years, we rode transit without fearing random attacks. And all you have to do is open the newspaper, open Twitter, or turn on the news to see violent attack after violent attack throughout the last number of months. We, were gathered, we gathered in public places with our loved ones, and we were free to do things that we wanted to do whenever we wanted to do them without fear. We went about our daily lives safe from criminals and the people who wanted to harm others, for the most part. Mr. Speaker, we used to feel safe in the city, and that feeling is fading away. And all you have to do is open the newspaper to see it. With every day that passes comes another story about the out-of-control violence in our streets and the innocent people who are being terrorized by it. Stories of people being stabbed in the head and in the face with ice picks. Stories about people who are swarmed and beaten, in some cases by teenagers pushed in front of moving trains, shoved to the ground, random attacks, stories about people being set on fire in the biggest city in our country. And all the recent attacks, the ones that I've outlined a number of times, were random. And all of these attacks were here in Canada. And the GTA is used to making international news. It's a big place, but not international news like this. Last week it was in the BBC. A few weeks ago it was in the New York Times. And even my hometown of Vaughan made it onto CNN in December after a horrific shooting. We're obviously seeing more of this. The rate is rising. The stats are clear. Rising crime is just not something that's tearing into my community, and it's not isolated. It's something that's happening in every single place, in every neighborhood across the country. It's happening in Vancouver, where entire sections of the city are being taken out by, or, or being taken over, I should say, by the out-of-control drugs and gang activity. It's happening in rural communities everywhere, where only 18% of Canadians live, but 25% of violent crime takes place. Those numbers are shocking. Our nation, in our nation, there were more homicides in 2019 than in 2018. There were more in 2022 than in 2019, and there were more in 2021 than 2020. That's a pattern, and somebody has to say it. Things aren't okay, because each day we see the suffering in our communities and more in action or frankly, not the right action in our Parliament. While our neighbourhoods are affected by crime, the Liberals are busy telling us once again that it's somebody else's fault or it's somebody else's job, deflecting blame and denying guilt. But again, the stats are clear. Just turn on the news. While families are grieving the loss of loved ones to violence, the Liberals are busy reducing penalties for the heinous acts like robbery with a firearm, fentanyl trafficking that are ravaging the streets of places like Vancouver, of smaller places like Peterborough and London, places like right here outside of this house, and kidnapping. That's also on the list. And while victims of crime are struggling to get justice, the Liberals are standing by their policies and making it easier for the very people that are responsible for these crimes to go back out into the world and just do it all over again. They're standing by Bill C-75. That's what we're talking about today, which makes it easier to get bail. It makes it easier to get let out of custody, easier for criminals to get back to their illegal activities and harm even more people. And it's broken, and what we are doing in this country isn't working, and everybody else knows it. Last year in Toronto, there were 44 shooting-related murders. People were murdered with a gun. Seven of those arrested were out on bail already on charges uh, of gun crime. 17 of those were out on bail for other crimes, and if you're keeping score, that's more than half. More than half of the 44 murders in the city that I've spent most of my life in, more than half, 24 people were out on bail. 
24 additional families who lost loved ones because of the liberal broken bail system that every single premier exists, says that is broken. Every single police union, police chiefs. If you look at the, if you look at everybody else talking about it, they say that bail reform could save lives. And there are lots of other things that we can talk about, but not talking about this when you know that it can save lives, not you, Madam Speaker, but when they know that it could save lives would be irresponsible. In 2021, 165 people in Toronto who were out on bail for gun charges were arrested, including 98 of those people who were arrested on gun charges. It's broken and what we're doing in this country isn't working and everybody agrees. In the last time, the last time the Liberals were in power, violent crime since the Liberals have been in power, I should say, violent crime has increased by 32 percent. Gang-related homicides by a staggering 92 percent. Carjackings have doubled in Toronto. Property theft, it's all gone up, it's broken, and what we're doing in this country simply isn't working. Our laws are broken. I think it's shocking that the Liberal member from Scarborough Southwest, he's a cabinet minister and he's a former Toronto police chief and he has said more about crime in Memphis last week than he has in his own city. That's disgraceful. And here today, Liberal members continue to insist that everything is fine and that nothing is wrong or that we're working on it. There was a meeting in last November where, they, where all premiers and the federal government agreed to do something and still there is nothing. Thirteen premiers have all written a demand letter to the Prime Minister to fix this, to fix our broken bail system. The voices are united. It's police officers, it's frontline officers, it's police unions, it's people on our front lines who are all begging this government to do something about it. We are going to stand on the side of law enforcement. We'll always stand on the side of law enforcement in this country, and we're going to stand on the side of victims of crime and not on the side of criminals. And we're going to stand to ending the soft on crime laws like Bill C-75 that put the rights of criminals above those of the victims. That's wrong. And all you have to do is open a newspaper to read about it. We're here today to demand action because the Liberals, if the Liberals won't do something, we will. And if they're not prepared to make a change, to do their job and protect Canadians, they should step aside and let somebody else do it. Yeah. It's, not about, it's not about some arcane regulation, Madam Speaker. It's not about political posturing. Everybody agrees. All premiers from different stripes. The mayor of my own hometown, who just ran for the provincial liberal leadership, wrote a demand letter to the prime minister asking for bail reform. This isn't a conservative issue. It's an issue for the, uh, the, that will speak to the public safety, to protecting the rights of victims in this country over the rights of criminals. Our proposal is simple. Prioritize the rights of victims and law-abiding citizens and not the criminals. Fix the broken bail system that's letting murderers, that's letting repeat offenders out free to recommit crimes in the community, bring back penalties and punishments that actually fit the crime, particularly for violent criminals, violent repeat offenders. Fight crime where it exists, at our borders and in our gangs, and not in the home of law-abiding firearms uh, uh, owners or hunters. Mr. Speaker, it's time to go back to, uh, to, to a time where people felt safe in their communities, where people could walk on the streets without being randomly attacked, where criminals are punished for the crimes that they committed, where Canadians have the right to travel wherever they want, whenever they want, free of fear on public transit, to go out in public with their families and feel safe. I hope that all members on behalf of their communities and on behalf of their constituents and their loved ones stand up for those rights and we can do that by passing this motion today and I hope that honorable colleagues in this 